Good morning. This is Gerald Melbourne, but I think all of you probably know that already. Um, it's Saturday morning, September 26, and this is the opening day of our Kim Kiever exhibition. We are delighted for this to be Kim's third show, and we actually have him here in the room with us. Kim, welcome to Charlotte yet again. Thank you, Gerald. Great to be here. Well, how do we begin? I first became acquainted with your work by uh, seeing an exhibition that from somewhere else, perhaps another colleague or museum, and I was instantly intrigued by these beautiful, beautiful images. I know we're looking at several right now, um, but I also think that Kim is a very unusual artist in the way he works and how he makes his images. It's curious to me because uh, being a photographer and at this particular juncture, the only photographer that I represent uh, is that to me they are so painterly. And when I look at them, I see them uh, well, in a, in a lot of directions, we'll talk about that in a moment, but, you know, Kim uses paint, but he doesn't use a brush. Uh, Kim uses paint, but he doesn't use canvas. He uses paint and water, and then, in a sense, records what you see, what is in front of you, and rather than my going on, why don't, why don't you start a little bit by giving us some idea of the process of making these beautiful, beautiful images. Well, thank you, Gerald. Um, I, I'm always looking for what I haven't seen before. I mix colors and I put them in bottles and I squeeze the paint into the water, typically. Into the water being a big yeah, tank? Yeah, it's a 200 gallon tank filled with water and lit uh, on the sides. Um, I have the camera in front of the tank and I'm generally standing behind the tank and I can uh, fire the camera remotely. So that's really the, the basic setup. So water tank, drop the paint in and then the paint does very magical things. I, that's what I look for. I, I, uh, I was just tell, I was telling Gerald a little earlier that I, I've shot, uh, taken 52,000 shots now at this point over about a period of six years. And um, so I have a lot to choose from and I'm constantly looking through uh, my, the, the images I've shot to look for something I haven't seen before, something that has some kind of magic in it whether it's color, whether it's form, uh, whether it's a technique, uh, uh, I'm, uh, that sort of thing. I'm always trying different uh, techniques, to uh, methods of uh, connecting the paint to, to the water. What kind of paint are you using? Is this just old, regular household paint? Is it specially prepared on your, on your part? Sometimes it's acrylic, sometimes it's an oil, sometimes it's both in the same tank. Well, you can't use oil because it floats to the top and it would be a hell of a cleanup job. <laughs> so it, it's basically any kind of paint that mixes with water. Or So I, I use ink, I, I, I've used uh, house paint uh, pigment, uh, I've used uh, clothing dye, um, anything that dissolves in water. Tempera, you know, they, do, they, they all have different qualities. Qualities in the color intensity or qualities in how it billows and flows in the water? Well, both really, yeah. Um, Tapper tends to float more, I don't know exactly why. Well, I'm going to um, encourage our visitors to see sort of Kim in action because we have some YouTube videos as well and we will link them and with this little video that we're doing. Uh, fascinating when I was able to watch Kim work. 
and to see this paint and its response to itself in the water and its response to the other paints and the different viscosities of the paint and how sometimes they will billow and the colors will melt together and then the next time they will force themselves apart and be um, into this other world image. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, that's for me, that's the beauty of it. Uh, 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 searching for randomness is something I, I haven't seen before. When I look at these different images, one time I see them as being otherworldly, maybe even from outer space. And then sometimes some of them look, at, I, I look at them and they feel like they're some sort of sea urchin. Mm. Or, um, but to me, there is such accidental process. Right, right. That's key, the, the accident. I'm waiting for a good accident. Yes. Um, do you think to some degree it's a controlled accident? Yeah, in the sense that uh, as, as, so I, I, sometimes I have uh, forms in the tank for the paint to move around. For example, I, I did a balloon series with uh, water-filled balloons uh, suspended in the, in the water. And I noticed how interesting it was the way the paint would flow over the balloons. So that brought me to the next uh, idea, which was to use a, a roll of, of material that the paint would roll over. Uh, and that, that, that made some interesting images. So I'm always looking for new ways to push the paint around, so to speak. So the, the paint is billowing all over the tank. You have set up the camera, you're shooting remotely. Uh, then what do you do? You, you look at many, many images on a large computer screen and right. start to do editing? Exactly. Yeah, I'll, I'll get anywhere from 35 to 100 images in one shoot and um, I, I bring them into, into the computer and start uh, looking through them and uh, I, I, I try to work uh, quickly at that, at that part of the process uh, to just something that strikes my subconscious or what I, or what I assume is my subconscious. Uh, to get get an, an interesting and image or a few images from that batch. So many of them are discarded. Oh yeah, most of them. But yeah, uh, out of fifty-two thousand, uh, maybe maybe I have about eighteen hundred that are I feel are, are strong images. And to get that eighteen hundred, first you select the images. Then do you not also crop? I do. Cropping is uh, for me. It's uh, one of the most uh, powerful parts of the project. Um, I, I even cry, I, I bring the images on, onto my phone, I crop them on my phone, and when I'm out somewhere, I spend a lot of time just looking over the images and trying to find a better crop. Do you, um, so for me, it's, it's amazing how you use all different sorts of technology. Does that come somewhat from your past history and career with, with NASA? I, it, I, I guess you could say it comes from my engineering background. I graduated in engineering and I got most of my master's degree uh, before, I, I was two credits short, two courses short. I uh, really didn't want to be an engineer, I really wanted to be an artist and I had always been an artist since a, a little kid, since I was a little kid. so. Um, I had to make a life choice. What do I want to do with my life? And uh, I, I was basically bored with engineering. Making art was a lot more fun. My next question, Kim, um, your titles. It's kind of curious that every work just bears a number. And usually four, five, six numbers. Particular reason for that, I'll, I'll begin by saying a lot of artists dislike title. I know some artists love the title, but for you, how did this come about that um, it's just a numbering system? Well, I, 
used to title everything, and I used to think of na names, and uh, I, it was quite a chore. I'm spending a lot, a lot of time thinking about titles, which it didn't, I didn't feel was re relevant to the work. Um, so I, I started go going to music stores and just copying the, the, the titles of songs. And most of the songs, uh, to the song titles are very typical. Uh, I, I love you, I, I love girls. And, but I, I, some of them were like very poetic. Like my favorite one was Girl on a Road. You know, it's just made a great title. <laughs> but eventually I got tired of that and it seemed like, well, what do I care about titles? I, I just as soon uh, number everything. So they're basically chronologically do you, numbered. Do you think that titling them would alter someone's perception of the work and that the, the numbering system just simply gives it its own identity without... I, I think it would be better to title them. Uh, do you? To, to be honest, yeah. And sometimes I think, well, Maybe, maybe I should title it. A few okay, years. then, Kim, title the one behind you. <laughs> I'm not sure I can do that. Uh, well, uh, you know, sometimes it could, they, they could be just purely descriptive, but... Uh, there you go, green, green and white. Yeah, green and white, or, uh, yeah, and then that doesn't help the viewer, really, because right. they're already seeing that. Well, Picasso had a lot of titles like that. Yes. Man and a woman, woman and a man. But also, it man and a woman with a tambourine. There you go. Yeah. Also, it works out better in the computer because if you have abstract x x x x x, and now I'm up to five digits, um, it, it, they're all nicely placed in the computer, so you can see see which is which. Well, Otherwise, you have to have to have a, have a numbering system on top of the titles, so so you can know for yourself. Then let's go to your use of the computer and using the computer to help you with the editing process. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I was a painter for about 20 years before I really got, got into photography seriously. And um, so I, the, the painting, uh, what I learned in, as a painter uh, continues into the photography. Um, aside from the cropping, uh, I, I work on different areas. And, uh, perhaps try to bring them more into the light or make them certain areas a little more contrasty or less contrasty. Maybe add a little color here and there, uh, maybe reduce a little color here and, here and there. Things you would uh, basically do as a, as a painter. So uh, working with the paint in the water, it's really uh, like painting. It's also like sculpture in a way, uh, depending on what I have in, in the tank. All of the works in this particular exhibition are just the pigments in the tank. I know that you have, and you alluded to this a few minutes ago, that you have done a series where you've included other objects in the tank with the billowing paint. Personally, I'm a bit of a purist. As you well know, I'm, uh, I seem to gravitate personally toward this kind of image. Um, do you think that using artificial objects within the tank helps, hinders? I, I think it helps. It, it, uh, it, it gives me a different uh, method to work with and I get uh, other surprises. The billowing paint is the most popular of, of my work. But I, I constantly like to try different things. I, I think it's uh, worth it to, to keep experimenting. It, it's part, for me anyway, it's part of the, the love of being an artist, uh, an ability to, uh, to, to, to keep experimenting. Well, this is uh, Kim's third exhibition with the gallery. We're delighted to have him here in Charlotte again. Um, the exhibition opens officially today and is on view through, I'm forgetting off the top of my head. November 7th, was it? November 7th, thank you, Kim. So, thank you all. Please take a look at the actual process of Kim's work on the YouTube videos. You will find it 
very fascinating. And uh, we'll see you again for another interview here at the gallery.